Brett Okamoto with ESPN alongside UFC featherweight Sadiq Youssef, who just picked up a big win against Andre Feely at UFC 246 in Las Vegas. And Sadiq, uh, you know, coming in, I, I said this, and I think a lot of other people said this, that this was a fight that people were excited about. They wanted to watch it. Now it's over. You got the you got the victory. How did you feel about what went on uh, in those 15 minutes? Well, let me put on my reporter hat. Did, let me ask you a question. Did we deliver? I mean, so far, yeah, it's my fight of the night. We got a few more to go, but I, I think so. I think people enjoyed it. How did it feel being out there? Nice. It felt fantastic. You know, I'm just happy that I delivered. You know, like, um, I've always had a problem since I first started um, training. The way I feel in my fights and the way it looks like is never, it never matches. That's why my coaches are always there to tell me how it went. So I don't know if it looked good or not, you know, but I'm happy that you guys said I delivered. What do you mean? Are you just a harsh critic? It just doesn't feel good when you're out there? I think that's what it is. You know, I, every single time I always think I look horrible. And then I go back and rewatch, and I was like, oh, that wasn't bad at all, you know? So, but it's one of those things that I think it helped me progress, you know, because practice always felt bad, you know? So I was always eager to make improvements. At the end of the day, why do you think that you uh, felt you, you won the fight? What did you do that, that, that got you this victory tonight? I think um, just surprised them. I surprised them because a lot of people, um, they don't know because they haven't done the research on what team I train with, you know, because everybody always thinks I'm just a boxer. But today I was able to show that I actually have a lot of jiu-jitsu skills too, you know. I train jiu-jitsu more than I do any other martial arts. And my coach is, we have a team for the world champions who I go back and forth with every single day. So I think the fact that he was expecting to just take me down and that'll be the end of the grappling, I think it really shocked him, you know. I know he posted online saying this was going to be his most dominant one yet, which I kind of figured meant that he was going to try to wrestle me and control me but a lot of people they don't know you know if you do your research there was a t while when I was making the jiu-jitsu grind you know when I was doing the jiu-jitsu jiu tournaments but once I started doing MMA I started focusing on the sport of MMA and left the whole jiu-jitsu scene but that doesn't mean I stopped training it I do jiu-jitsu like I said probably 80 percent of my practice is around jiu-jitsu I mean, obviously the record's perfect, 4-0, and it seems like every time you're coming after these fights that you are one of those guys where, you know, there's, there's 12, 13 fights on a card sometimes, but you have, you have had a knack to, to stand out. Do you yes. f have you felt that, and do you feel like the UFC machine is getting a little bit behind you? Yes, I think um, as soon as I showed up on the contender, they saw it as like, oh, I like what I see here, you know? And it's, it's one of those things that I, I can't take too much credit for because it's just a blessing. It's something that I'm born with, you know? And like my last fight, I remember telling my coaches that I was going to go out of my way to make it a, a crazy wild fight, you know? And I can make those kind of decisions because I'm naturally a, a walk-in kind of fighter, you know? Like there's some people who they have to force themselves to fight like that. But if I make that decision, I can fight like that without even thinking twice about it. I have a fan-friendly style. That's why... You you just have to see me fight one time before you get on board. It's not a lot of people that I got to convince. I, I'm telling you, come watch me fight. Come watch me fight. Once you see one, you kind of know what to expect from the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Andre Feely came in. He wasn't, um, you know, he's not ranked in the top five, but I think he was a guy who came into the UFC with, with a, a lot of expectations. People were high on his potential, and they were starting to say that, hey, this guy's realizing his potential. And now you beat him. Where, you know, forget what, what others might say or forget what the rankings might show up on Monday. Where do you feel like you, you are in this division? I th definitely in the upper echelon, you know. Go through the books and think about the people that Andre has beaten and even the people that he lost to. Like, the only – um. The Michael Johnson fight was close, you know. Um, I, some people say he could have won, some people say he could have lost. It was a very close fight. But Dennis Bermudez, um, Miles Jury, he has a lot of solid wins, you know. And the fact that I just beat him, you know, it was unanimous decision. All three jerseys scorecards. I got to be up there in the upper echelon of the division. I don't know, like you said, the numbers are kind of all over the place. I don't know what the number is, but minimum, I got to be like top 15, you know. <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm definitely up there. Right now, I'm just... I'm going to rest up, see how all my bruises feel, talk to my coaches, and then we're going to start making that climb. So I'm, I'll put you on the spot. Maybe you have an answer, maybe you don't. But in a perfect world, where would you fight and who would be, be standing across uh -huh. from you? I, like you said, I don't really have an answer. If I had to pick where, I remember last time I picked where and it didn't happen because I, I wanted to fight in um, D.C. But um, like I said, though, is a lot of these things that happen to me is like, like there's an angel watching me, you know, like I didn't get the DC f to fight in Washington, DC, but then they called me and told me I'm going to be fighting on the Conor McGregor card, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> so I can't complain. It's all blessings at the end of the day. Right now, there, there's a whole lot of rumblings talking about a uh, UFC Africa, you know, so that would be what I would ask for in a, in a perfect world is like a UFC Africa. But then if that don't work out too, I know there's going to be a blessing behind the next door. <laughs> this is your fourth fight in the UFC. I know a lot of times guys come off of uh, four fight contracts seem to be uh, sort of the 
thing right now in the sport. Yeah. Was were you on a four fight contract? What is your um, contract status? No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't wait until the fourth one. You know, after the third one, I kind of switched it. I kind of signed a new one. Okay. So this would be the first one in my new contract. Okay, cool. And last question I'll ask you is: I know that you've you've had it a goal of yours to uh, to bring some of your family over to the United States from Africa. Give us an update on that. There's a there's a great update on that. You know, any of you that's following me on social media or anything like that, I me me my brother and my mother we just became U.S. citizens. Um, let's say like three weeks ago really? so I, as soon as we got we got our citizenship i was eager i was like all right it's time to start filing blah 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 my mom was like hey slow your horses man go finish your fight yeah. we didn't even celebrate honestly you know because i was in camp i can't really eat much you know so we didn't celebrate we just got our u.s citizenship we took our vows and stuff like that and we took pictures and i went straight to practice that night so we haven't started filing yet but as soon as we get home we got a lot of work to do man like i said i'm i I'm, I'm blessed, man, you know. I feel like my brother's watching over me and like my mom's in the prayers, everybody back home that's praying for me. There's a lot of blessings coming our way. So the next step right now is try to see if I can get the rest of my family over here. We're gonna start, I, I might get on the computer tonight and start filing the paperwork, you know. But my mom told me to wait. So we're gonna celebrate our citizenship. We're gonna celebrate this victory. And it's time to start filing for my brothers and sisters to come to America. God willing, they'll get their visas too. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.